Hey everybody, how is everybody doing and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are doing actually a quite important topic on well you know the normal drive stuff now this is actually I wouldn't say quite important but it's actually a lot of fun to play with so let's get started now for first of all the survival survival is actually out and I know that now I do have survival but unfortunately Currently with the survival, uh, I don't see any of my blueprints and I don't see any of the mods Not that I need mods, but I don't see any of the blueprints which means that I cannot make any piston engine related stuff Because I don't have piston engine as I told you guys in my previous video is that I need a piston engine You know, I don't know how to create piston engines Right, and I need to paste it from the workshop. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't show up. But I heard that there's an update that, that actually fixes that. I'm not quite sure. But also, I just want to say this, that if you guys want me to create a survival series, I will go ahead and do that. Just comment down below if you want me to do it. I'll probably put a poll somewhere. But let's get started. So, today's topic. Universal joints. Now, what are universal <laughs> joints? I mean, just transferring a power at an angle. That's pretty much it. So now, how to create them? So, so in real life, if you ever saw a new universal joint, actually, a lot of people that I saw in Scrap Mechan actually create a very inefficient or very big universal joint. Now, as of my experience with universal joint, there are actually two types of universal joint. One that I've created customly and the other one is just well um, I can't, I can't invent it first right so anyway so to create the one that I have we have to do you start off with this then you want to go and do this create this and this and then you want to bend it down put a bearing bend it up put a bearing Put a where is it? Which one is it? The four piece, then put two bearings on the side and do that, but upset from the side, just like so. Now this is my custom made one. Now I saw people that a lot of people actually have made universal joints, and they actually make it in. They actually made these in two different steps where first you have this top one and then later on going forward you have the side ones but this actually saves you a lot of space now allow me to demonstrate right here if i were to just copy the same thing over which i'm not gonna sit you guys uh, I'm, I'm not gonna actually uh, show you guys that because you know just so you don't get bored Okay, so after we have done this, after we created the two universal join, now if you guys want the quick refresh on how to create a universal join, this is how. Let me just show you guys. I hold, I don't know if I uh, oh, I show you guys correctly there. So put a bearing down. Now you don't necessarily need to put this piece down, but you can of course. Now the starting of universal joins by creating a T piece, going up one up and one down. Then taking a curved piece just like that, the same on the bottom, and then making another curved piece like that so that it, it kind of curves inwards. Then you want to take a bearing, place it on both of these, then take a four piece, place it on both of these, and then do the same for the sides. Just like so, put, a, put two bearings, put two curved pieces, then curve them inwards, put a T piece, oh, that's the wrong way. Put a T piece right there, weld these two pieces together and there you have your universal joint. Now, right here I've actually created this universal joint, now uh, I hope I didn't forget the pair on that side, no I didn't. So, this is how it's gonna work. Now, just to demonstrate, I'm actually gonna place down a piston right here, with the block on top and weld this. So, it's gonna drop it off our lift and connect a uh, electric engine. Now there, you can see, now this of course would be your piston engine or pull your clutch or drive shaft, whatever you guys wanted. And this will be your uh, go output going to let's say your wheels or the 90 degree turner for the rear pull, for the rear drive shaft where you have to make the power go to the wheels. Now, this is actually a pretty important step, make sure you place down a piston. 
this will allow uh, the extending of these two joints for up to like 15 blocks. Let me demonstrate. Now let's say your car is like normal. And then you lift it up. You see, the power is still the same. The power comes from this side and then it curves and then it goes up. Now I can do this for actually a pretty long time. You can see it glitches out. Now let me show you why. You see these right here, how these work? Now if you actually cross a point, what they will do is they will intersect each other. Like you can see right here, the angle gets so big that this piece right here starts to hit those ones. Just like that, right? These pieces you can see it, start, it starts to hit these ones. Now if the angle gets big enough, it, it will get stuck on here. So be careful on putting, uh, you know, some sufficient space between these two. And not to make the angle very hard, but I mean, look at this. For what, around six blocks, I believe this is total from here all the way to here when the piston is off. This, I believe, is six blocks. And for six blocks, you get a decent range of, uh, I would say, eight blocks, like that. Eight blocks flexibility. Now, for the second one, I'm sorry if I'm saying too much. Uh, I know I don't want to get I don't want you guys to get bored now uh, for the second one in this one this is actually pretty easy this is easier than that one but the problem with this is, is that your bar goes sideways let me demonstrate so for this one you put a bearing put a down piece going downwards put this piece put a bearing on that put a piece going sideways and I can have it either of the other sides it's up to you then put a bearing on that and then make another side piece just like so in this curvature with bearing on each place then you can have piston if you want to or if not it's all up to you now I suggest making uh, putting a single piece because that actually allows a lot of flexibility else it will actually glitch a lot so Please put a single piece down. You can of course make it compact, but I wouldn't suggest, suggest that. Now I have to do the same, and then you place, you connect it just like so. Now I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Now you see, with this one, the thing is that now the difference is between that one, that one over there, and this one. This one takes a lot less space as compared to that one, but this is a lot less stable now uh not a lot less stable but it is quite a bit unstable than that one now you can see that this actually features all the way up oh no not all the way up i guess i went too much but yeah it does feature some decent uh okay i built these two closer what is happening here <laughs> that was really weird uh, that was actually super weird. I know I never had that before anyway So this takes up a lot less space and that actually takes up a lot more space, but that is more stable less stable now Let me show you the things you can create with these Let me just go ahead and pull out this car right here Hey guys, it's Razor Tech Afro with you. So in this video, I actually forgot to mention that with these universal joint, you can actually use suspension and still power the wheels. Like in this video, I actually have it to power my rear wheels. And that is all I wanted to say. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me just drop it in the correct position. Now you see in this case, what you can see, oh, this is the wrong one. Uh, 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 this is embarrassing so as you guys can see right here this one well, oh god oh no 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 I'm stuck now you see in this one what ha actually happens here is oh my god why do I keep falling down uh, anyway now this is the three piston and I actually like to use this the three inline engine you can get it from the workshop and then it goes into a clutch and drive shaft which then you know the uh, uh, I, I don't remember what I called it whatever a transport case <laughs> and then it goes straight into my stable UV joint which then goes into a differential now um, I don't know where my non-differential version is so I'm just gonna roll with this so now you see how this works is if I just turn on the engine this works normally right and if I were to press the button 2 at, at least in my case you can see oh god you can see that with this placed in the middle of the car 
the bottom wheels are pushed down and the whole the whole middle section the engine section lifted up even though the power is being transferred at an angle that is the amazingness of a universal joint so these are the type of things you can do now in other cases like Khan does what he actually likes to do is he actually brings down uh, the wheels if I can just find the one for you right here oh god now you see in these cases oh no this is the wrong one ah eh, whatever so in this case you can see that oh why is it so slow right you can anyway you can see that in this case everything lifts up except the wheels the wheels actually push down and this allows if you actually place the uv joint like this this actually allows you to get a lot of flexibility on your vehicles and a lot of height so i would recommend using a universal joint connected to wheels of course you can also split down the middle like i did with the first vehicle but it's all it's all up to you the creativity is there i just showed you guys how to create a universal joint anyways guys thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video Leave a like and subscribe and goodbye.